check check hello welcome everyone um, so today we are going to see uh, dvrs nat ha for neutron um, so i'm not sure like how many are aware about the dvr um, and its features so what we are going to do is uh, um, we're going to touch base on the introduction about the dvr just for uh, just to give an insight about for the new audiences and then we are going to move into the uh, details about the dvr so here, uh, along with me, so my name is Swaminathan Vasudevan, and uh, I'm an active technical contributor in Neutron and working on DVR for the last two years. And uh, along with me here, uh, Adolfo Duarte, and uh, he was the, one of the active contributor for the SNAT HA. And uh, here's Hardik Italia, uh, who is going to um, co-present with us, and he's going to show a demo uh, along with the presentation. Uh, so without uh, wasting much time, let's go into the actual presentation, and then, uh, so just to give you a, an expectation, so we will give you some time at the end to have some questions, so if you have any questions, feel free to get to the uh, speakers or mics on the both sides, and then you can uh, ask your questions, and then we'll try to answer your questions. So the agenda for today is, uh, as I mentioned, we'll have uh, uh, an intro to DVR, and then uh, what's, what are the current um, problems that we face with DVR and an SNAT node, and uh, what solution we have today uh, for, to address that. And then we'll move on to the DVR HA to address the uh, problems that we have today. And then we'll go into the details of the DVR SNAT HA to tell you um, what contents it has in the namespace and how it uh, takes over using VRRP and keep alive D. And then we will show you the configuration options. And then we will also uh, go over a, a short uh, recorded demo. We don't want to show you a live demo. And most of the time, it doesn't work. So we make sure we have recorded it, and we can show you the recorded demo. Uh, and then um, we will also touch base. Uh, if we have time, we'll touch base what are the features that we um, achieved during the Mitaka time frame for the DVR. Uh, basically with respect to scheduling and control plane changes. And then uh, we will go over the uh, roadmap that we'll be working on for the Newton time frame. Uh, so let's get started. Okay. So uh, on an intro, so Neutron has a legacy routing capability, um, which it had a routing capability. We call it as a legacy router, and then we introduced the, the DVR routers. So that's why we we had a name. We gave a name to it as legacy routing. So if you look at the the pictures in here, um, you see there's a VM1, VM2. There's a router, and the router is basically um, created in a network node. You have compute node, uh, and this one shows you how a VM from compute node A can talk to compute node B. If this has to, if they both are on two different networks, if it has to route the traffic, the traffic has to always go through the network node. It has to get routed, and the packet has to hit the VM. This is not only the case for VMs that are existing on uh, two different nodes, but it is also the case for VMs that are residing uh, on the same host. So if you have two VMs on the same host, even if they want to communicate between each other, the traffic has to go all the way to the network node and come back. In order to address this issue um, and to make the solution more scalable. Uh, the other issue that we have here is like uh, if, if you have a fixed IP on this VM and if you want to expose the fixed IP to the outside world and you assign a floating IP to this VM, all your floating IP traffic has to go through the network node. So it's all the traffic, all your floating IP traffic, all your SNAT traffic, all your inter-VM traffic or intra-VM traffic will all flow through the network node. So you are stressing a lot on the network node, and that was the reason that led to the invention of the DVR. <clears throat> so what, what the distributed router does is basically, what we did is we took the same architecture as the legacy routers, and then we were trying to create routers on all the compute nodes. Uh, with the help of the agents that are running in the, each and every compute node. So if you see here, we are running L3 agent in the network node. We are running L3 agent in the compute node 1. We are running L3 agent in compute node 2. So we have um, routers here, Q router 1 and Q router 2. And we have 
Q router 1, Q router 2, Q router 1, and Q router 2. So what we do is we basically replicate the routers on all the nodes that we have. And these routers are replicated on demand basis. They are not created by default on all the nodes. They are only created on demand. So what happens, which is the uh, event that actually triggers the VMs to be getting created? So if you have a VM port, uh, for example, I'm giving an example as a VM port because that's the most dominant one. But there are uh, other ports. We call it as DVR serviceable ports. So a VM port is a DVR serviceable port, an LBAS port is a DVR serviceable port, or a DHCP port is a DVR serviceable port. On all these three cases, you need a router, a local router, to be created on the compute node. So uh, uh, any of these nodes pop up on these compute nodes, and if that port has a port binding associated with this compute node one, as soon as the L2 agent sees that, uh, it communicates to the neutron server, and the neutron server um, instructs the L3 agent to go create a router for that uh, port in here. So a local router is created in here, and your traffic, uh, if you want to send traffic from red VM to the pink VM, it will get actually um, routed and then sent back to this uh, VM locally. So you don't need to send the traffic all the way to the network node and get routed back. So if, again, if you want to have an inter-VM uh, between the nodes, um, the traffic will actually flow. It will get routed on compute node 1, and the traffic will flow through this one, go here, and then reach the uh, VM on the other node. Again, if you want to have a floating IP, we, um, if, if, this, if one of these VMs have floating IP assigned, we do create a floating IP namespace on the compute node, and the floating IP namespace will be connected to the router namespace for every routers. So this floating IP uh, is basically a shared namespace uh, between all the tenants, and it will be created uh, on, on the basis of external networks. So for every external network that you have, public network, uh, you will have one floating IP namespace that will be shared by all the tenants. So uh, here in this example, I have one external network, so I have one floating IP namespace in here which is being shared by all the routers. So in this case, one of these routers is connected to the floating IP. So all your VM's floating IP traffic need not hit the network node, and it will actually bypass the network node, and it can flow through this one. The uh, one limitation that we had with the DVR is even though we actually distribute the east-west traffic as well as the north-south uh, floating IP traffic, uh, our SNAT traffic will still be flowing through the network node. So in this case, the, uh, if you want to do, if these VMs have a default SNAT configured, what we do is, um, in the case of legacy routers, we don't have a concept of SNAT namespace, but in the case of uh, DVR routers, we do have a concept of SNAT namespace. What we did is we kind of splitted the functionality within the router namespace for the legacy routers because the legacy routers have one single router namespace which does uh, floating IP functionality, NATing functionality, as well as the routing functionality. So we kind of split apart that functionality into three different namespaces, a router namespace for doing router functionality, and then a floating IP namespace to do the floating IP translation, and then an SNAT namespace to do the SNAT translation. So um, based on its functionality, um, we kept it in the place where it is required. So we kept the SNAT namespace only in the network node where it is required. We kept the floating IP namespace in, in the other nodes. Again, the DVR can operate in two different modes, uh, the, basically the L3 agent. Uh, one is the DVR SNAT mode, and the other one is the DVR mode. So if you are running in a compute node, you don't need SNAT. Just run the L3 agent in a DVR mode. But if you're running in, um, if you need SNAT on that node, just run it in a DVR SNAT node. But if you want to go back to the legacy one, just configure it as a legacy mode, and it will still work with the legacy routers. So, uh, so those are the options that you have. And then, um, as I mentioned, um, the, the SNAT was centralized. And the issue that we have here is a, it's a single point of failure. So uh, L3, Neutron has an L3 HA um, that was introduced in Juno. But the DVR was introduced at the same time, but we did not have the DVR HA, uh, SNAT HA for the routers, but they had L3 HA. So there was a, uh, an issue running L3 HA along with the DVRs. So that's a solution that we try to solve here. So what happened is now we are trying to provide a high availability for this SNAT namespace that is residing in here, which exactly uses the same uh, technology that the L3HA uses. So we are not making any change to that protocol. 
Uh, moving on to the next slide. So um, this is the network node issues that I talked about. The one thing um, that I mentioned about the reason we went to the uh, centralized SNAT was um, the VPN as a service is a singleton service, and it has to run in, a, in an SNAT, and we had it running previous to Juno. So when we introduced DVR, we don't want to break that feature. So we said, in order to support VPN as a service, we need to have SNAT as a centralized one. So that's the reason we had it as a centralized one, and we still maintain it. Um, so going to the next one, as I said, um, before we introduced the HA, uh, the only solution we had for SNAT was in case of failures, what will happen? How will you transfer the SNAT functionality from one node to another node? So you bring up another DVR SNAT node, then you try to uh, move your SNAT uh, routers. Basically, there is no uh, a CLI command that says move my SNAT into node one to node two, but it's basically we have been using the same API that um, routers has for router move, but if it is a, a router move that has an SNAT, what we do is, um, if you are moving from one DVR SNAT to another DVR SNAT, we basically check if it is a DVR node, DVR SNAT node, and then if you want to move it, just remove your association to that agent and associate to a different agent. Uh, so in order to do this one, we are not allowing any routers to getting migrated from a DVR node to a DVR node, because that is not required, because we already have a high availability solution as a scalable solution by creating routers on each and every nodes. So we are not uh, allowing you to move routers from one compute node to another compute node, but we are allowing you to move SNAT uh, from one node to another node because of the restriction that we had. So that was a solution we had. Now, um, I think with the Mitaka release, we do have the SNAT HA, which is similar to L3 HA. So uh, Adolfo will take over from here, and he is going to uh, go into the high-level details about the SNAT HA and how it works. Here you go. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Adolfo Duarte. I work for HP Enterprises. And as Swami said, I'm one of the many contributors to work on the DVR HP SNAT. By the way, I see a couple of you out here. Thank you very much. It took a lot of people working on this to get it out the door. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, so the subject of uh, DVR H not HA is a bit complex to try and just get it explained in a couple of slides. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over a high-level overview of how it works, and then Swami will go again over the same subjects in a little more detail, and hopefully repetition will help us out here so that we can understand this. And even if, it's, if you don't, um, we wrote the slides so that you can use them as reference. Uh, so after this, if you still have questions that we didn't answer, please come back to the slides. Um, with that said, you're going to see a lot of little details, little labels, little connections on these slides. Don't try to read them all at once right now. Again, we put them there just so you can have them as reference later on. Um, and hopefully, if I do my job right, I can give you a high-level overview of how it works, how the functionality was implemented, and then Swami can take it in more detail, and then later on, Hardy can show you some more configuration. So um, before I start, can I see a raise of hands of any network engineers, administrators, or you've been a network engineer? I see a couple out there. So I, I was actually a network engineer in my previous jobs before I uh, started working in OpenStack Neutron. So I thought I would approach this from that perspective, because to me, it makes sense. Uh, it's things that I know, terms that I've used before. So I will be using some terms that are usually used in network engineering to reference, uh, to refer to certain things here. Um, and hopefully, it'll be clear when I make that reference. Um, all right, so let's see. And by the way, I'm not reading text right now. I'm just having, the, um, these are my notes, so I have to go and make sure that I cover everything that I wanted to. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so let me go over for uh, a couple of facts about DVR is not HA right out the door. Um, one thing is based, like Swami said, is based on L3HA, which was already implemented since Juno. Um, the DVR has not high availability. Just like L3HA, legacy L3HA, it's uh, provided by Keep Alive D processes. If you don't know what Keep Alive D process is, it's a process, a Linux process, open source package uh, that provides uh, 
uh, redundancy. Particularly, it uses VRRP to provide redundancy, but I'll go in more details. The point being, it's the same way the L3HA legacy uh, does it. We just did the same thing for DVR, S not HA. Now, the key polite processes, which are doing this hybrid, uh, you know, high availability redundancy, they use an HA network. Now, this network is a tenant network. <clears throat> in other words, it's created under the tenant. Uh, however, only the key polite processes have access to it. Um, you know, actually, theoretically, anyone has access to it, but it's meant so only the key polite processes have access to it. Um, when a high level, uh, when a high availability group is pre-created, and that's a, a router group, uh, all the routers are pre-created. This is a little different than DVR. In DVR, usually the router is not created until you actually need it. In other words, you create a router, you won't see a router namespace anywhere until you either associate a VM or attach it to an external network or do something that requires the interface. That's not the case with DVRHA. DVRHA takes the legacy L3HA approach, which is you create the router the moment you enter, for example, the CLI and the CLI create router, router name. You will see the router namespace created, the router namespace is created in the network controllers, or what will be the, you know, what we usually call the network controller, which is the node that runs the L3 agent. So uh, this diagram right here, um, this is DVR without as not HA. In other words, this is what's available before Mitaka. Um, and again, I try to do sort of a network diagram, if you will. Um, if you take a look, the bottom two squares, which I have labeled compute node, which is the open stack, uh, you know, usual term we use for it. Uh, if you're a network engineer, think of that as your server racks. You know, all the servers are down there. Uh, the top rack, I'm sorry, the top square, which is the network node in OpenStack terms, in networking uh, engineer terms, will be your router. So all the servers in the bottom two stacks are connected to the router on the top. Now, the orange lines and blue lines represent your networks. In OpenStack, the orange line represents your data network. That's the internal network, the network that VMs use to communicate with each other. The blue line represents the external network. You know, that's where your, um, you know, the other side of your floating IP lives, where the traffic that goes out to the internet or any other external network is used. Now think of those, as, uh, those the orange and blue lines as physical connections. You know, just think ethernet, if you will, if, if that makes you feel comfortable. Now in DVR without SNAT HA, any traffic that requires SNAT services, and by the way, SNAT stands for um, Source Network Address Translation, flows to the router. And you can see it by the green lines. That's the flow of traffic. Everyone is sending traffic to that guy because he's providing the SNAT services. Again, network engineers, just think of it this way. It's your router interface. You know, you have a router that is doing NAT. Everybody who needs NAT is gonna send their traffic that way. That's DVR. Now the problem with this is obviously if the router dies, that's it. You lost your services, right? Um, so that is the point of DVR with SNAT HA. It's a pretty simple concept. We just bring another router and then they create an active standby configuration. By the way, you can add more than one router. This diagram only shows one, but you can add two, three, however many you want. Knock on wood. I haven't tested up to 10, so I can't tell you that it works, but at least it makes it obvious you can have an active and a standby. Now, in the case of a failure, just like a regular router that is providing redundancy for another router in the networking world, what happens is that, uh, in reality, what's happening is that the standby is usually monitoring, that's actually not usually, it is monitoring the active router. If you have more than one standby router, they're all monitoring the active router. The moment that active router fails or something goes wrong, uh, you know, many reasons why it could fail, the standby routers select a new active router, okay? And they then, you know, they do their magic and they say, I'm gonna be active, no, I'm gonna be active, no, you be active. Well, somebody becomes active, the other routers stay a standby, the new roles are informed back up to the neutron server so that all traffic can be redirected to the new active router. 
<laughs> if anybody's seen, you know, network engineers, if you've seen BRRP, that's exactly what this is. Okay? It's basically BRRP on the Neutron. But we are using it to provide redundancy for the SNAP services. Okay, very, very strict, uh, very important distinction that I will go over later. Um, so that's pretty straightforward, right? Now I'm going to go a little bit in detail about how the Keep Alive processes are keeping track of what's going on. This is a new diagram. It's a little more logical, okay? I added a third router here just to make it more fun, okay? So the, um, the previous slide, you had two routers on the top. This slide, I added a third one. There's no difference. I just wanted to add more boxes to confuse people. But what's basically happened is that each one of the routers is running a keep alive process. Now, for those of you who know how namespaces work in Neutron, the keep alive processes are running in the SNAP namespace. Okay? That's one of the differences between DVRHA and legacy HA. So we introduced that for DVRHA. Again, the keep alive processes are running in the SNAP namespace of the router. Um, let's see. Oh. So in this diagram, as you can see, what's going on is that that, no, I don't want to go there yet. The, um, that green circle represents your HA network. Remember I mentioned there was an HA network created so that the keep alive processes can talk to each other? That's the tenant network, and this HA network. And you can see it if you do neutral netlist, you'll see it. And this is from L3HA, so it's nothing new. If you've used L3HA in Neutron, then you know what I'm talking about. If not, take my word, that's a, a tenant network that is used for keep alive processes to talk to each other. Now, the protocol being used between keep alive processes is VRRP. Um, all the rules of VRRP are of eight, who's, who becomes active, who becomes a standby, all of that is used. So in this scenario, what happens is once the keep alive processes detect that the active keep alive process has gone away, uh, um, I won't go in details on how to do it, but it's basically a ping, right? Just like BRP, they kind of keep each other saying hellos and all that sort of stuff. Once that guy goes away, all the other guys say, oops, our active guy just went away. We better elect one. They go through the VRP rules and they say, I'm the active guy. Once that selection is made, they reconfigure the interfaces, the router interfaces. Now I'm talking about, um, still talking about the router interfaces in the SNAT namespace. They get reconfigured to provide the correct um, traffic flow for the new active router. Once the roles are selected, the neutron network server is informed so that he can do whatever is necessary to make sure that all the compute nodes, network nodes, and anybody else who needs to send traffic that requires SNAP services is sent to the correct newly active router. So it's pretty straightforward. I mean, this is just BRRP um, in the OpenStack space. So that's the high, you know, that's a high overview of how it works. Hopefully, uh, it'll become clear as Swami goes a little more details. Now, before I give the the um, the mic back, I want to go over what DVR SNAT HA is and is not, just to be clear, so that we, you know, when you try to implement it or you plan to use it, you know what you're getting into and you know what to expect. So, <clears throat> DVI SNAT HA provides. high availability for the SNAP process of DVR. So DVR SNAP HA provides high availability for the SNAP process of DVR. OK? DVR HA is available when two or more agents, these are L3 agents, are configured uh, with DVR SNAP. It's very important. Uh, what we usually refer to as the DVR or network controller in OpenStack uh, in DVR terms, it's an L3 agent that is running in the DVR SNAP mode. If you have used DVR before, this is clear to you. If you haven't, then don't forget that. Okay, very important. Uh, and you need two because you're providing redundancy. As a matter of, you can configure how many you need, but you're gonna need at least two. So that's why you have two. 
And finally, which is the big deal and anticlimactic for all those people who have worked here on this, is that before Mitaka, if you try to create a router and you try to set the distributed flag to true and you try to set the HA flag to true, you will get a message that said, no, you can't do that. We don't support that. Well, what happened is that we finally got rid of that and now when you enter that command, you get a router that's DVRHA. So now let me go what it's not. DVRHA is not, I'm sorry, DVR is not HA, does not provide redundancy for other services running on the network node. Uh, and let me be clear why I put this in here. When we're talking about DVR S not HA, if you enable it, it does not mean that you automatically get uh, high availability for other processes like DHCP or VPN or LBAS. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying that enabling DVR S not HA is not enough to provide redundancy for those. You have to do a little bit more work, right? Those are two separate processes that are going on. DVR S not HA is not FIP HA. Again, another very important distinction, um, and I'm not trying to wiggle out of it, it's just that's a different discussion, different work, different approach, different namespaces. So we're not talking about FIP HA here. That, if you want FIP HA, that's a different thing that you have to do. DVR SNAT HA only provides redundancy for SNAT services. Uh, one good thing is that no new configuration options have been added to the configuration files. In other words, Etsy Neutron, Neutron.conf, the ML2.ini for the agent, L3 agent, INI, no new configurations. You just have to set different value ones for the ones that are already established. And then finally, uh, upgrading for regular other types of routers to a DVRHA router is not currently supported. Many reasons for that. One of them is uh, we haven't tested enough to say that it's supported. And personally, I'd rather not say that it's supported and then have somebody try it and break their system. And there's also other discussions that have to happen on that. Okay. Thank you. And now I will give it back to Swami. Just want to go, go back again to the old slide that I have. Um, this is my familiar um, diagram that I have, um, which exposes everything. So it's pretty clear, like how the traffic flows. So I just wanted to go back again to there um, to show you the how the traffic flows. So uh, I showed you the first picture where um, it was just a single node. Now we have two nodes in here as net nodes. Uh, one is the primary, um, which is basically the active and the uh, uh, standby. So if you see the, the next slide, uh, the traffic flow external uh, to internal network. So if you see here, uh, your external traffic will be flowing through the bridge here, goes through the SNAT namespace, and uh, actually it is headed towards uh, the green VM. So you have the green network already connected to the SNAT namespace. So you don't need to do any kind of special routing in here. So it just passes to the uh, green network, VRint, and it knows uh, based on the ARP details in here, it knows where the VM resides, and then the traffic goes to the uh, node. Uh, similarly, uh, for the flow on the reverse direction, <clears throat> so if you see, uh, okay, I have uh, moved. Similarly, on the reverse direction, um, if you see, uh, for the traffic that is originating from the red VM, the traffic goes into the router, and uh, it has a default route which says, okay, for the red network, my default uh, gateway port is residing in this node uh, where the red uh, interface is connected to the SNAT namespace, so the traffic goes into the BR int, it flows through the BR tunnel, comes here, goes into the BR int, comes to the red network here, goes to the SNAT namespace, and the traffic flows outside. Okay, so what, what happens when you have um, an SNAT uh, failure. So the traffic that was actually flowing through the green node will now start flowing through the yellow node because you have already the SNAT namespaces that you have created, but the only problem is this SNAT namespace will not have an IP on it. So basically, once the IP is assigned, uh, the traffic will start flowing through this one. 
So in order to go more deep into the namespace details, um, I just had a, another picture to show you a, a clear picture of what actually the namespaces uh, will contain. So if you see uh, in here, I have shown the Q router namespace and the SNAT namespace. Uh, so you have this red network and and the green network in here, which has the, the QR ports in here. And then you have the SG ports in here, which we normally create for every interface that you add to a QR. We normally create a port on the SG uh, on the SNAT, uh, which which has a prefix of SG, uh, which is basically an SNAT gateway port. And because of this port, all the traffic is able to be uh, reaching the red network and the green network and the vice versa. And you see the actual QG gateway port uh, residing in here. So the next one is basically um, showing the network node with a HA. So in this case, I'm showing you the, both the namespaces. The one addition to this one is basically a keep alive D is actually running on this uh, namespace. And you see an extra port, uh, an interface that's been created, which is basically an HA interface. And if you see, uh, the active one has an IP on, all, uh, on this one. And in this case, what happens is this um, HA interface has two IPs. Um, there is a 169.xxx.1 and uh, .2. Uh, whichever gets the dot .1, that's a primary, and whichever got, gets the second one, it's, it, it's basically the secondary. So uh, if you have any issues with SNAT HA, you can actually go into the namespace and see uh, which one has dot .1 and which one has dot .2, and what's, which is the standard and which is the primary, standby and primary. And uh, you can also have uh, a CLI command to show that, uh, to see that. So I will actually basically, so this is a dump which basically shows all the information that I just shared with you. Uh, with the HA um, on the active node. And then this is a, a dump on the standby node. So this one, uh, you can actually use it for reference. We will actually uh, publish the slides. You can take it from there. And then I will actually hand it over to Hardik for a short demo and a configuration option. Thank you. Thank you, Swami. Um, so for the configuration, uh, good thing is that uh, you don't have to learn about the uh, any new configurations file or a new configuration parameters. Uh, as far as you know how to do, enable the distributed virtual routing in the L3 HA, uh, you should be good to turn on this DVR SNET HA functionality, right? So as mentioned, no new configs, it's just uh, uh, old config. Uh, the what you just have to set is just a number of agents, a minimum and a maximum of number of agent which will participate in hosting the DVR SNET routers, uh, and then the router type, right? So if you see the, the table, uh, which is basically a neutron conf, there are two flags. One is for the L3HA, and the second one is for the router distributed. So based on that particular value uh, values, um, you can create a default, default uh, router, right? Um, so you can create DVR, uh, legacy router. You can create a legacy with L3 and now with the DVR and HA, right? So based on those values. So again, just go into the little bit detail about like uh, controller configurations. Uh, these are the pretty uh, well-documented neutron conf. Again, there is nothing new here. Uh, you just turn on the router distributed, also turn on the L3HA. Uh, you specify the CIDR to be created for the HA networks to talk to each other. Uh, and then again, you configure the max and minimum of agents that will participate into the hosting the router, HA router. Uh, this configuration is for the ML2 configuration. Again, you just turn on the routing. And for the L3 agent, uh, the main point here is that for the controller or a network node, you specify the agent mode as a DVRS net. And for all other configurations are just a VRRP configurations. And on the compute node, uh, your agent mode needs, uh, needs to be configured as a DVR. So this is just a slide of how to create now a distributed and a HA router. Again, based on your default settings, you may not have to specify those flags. Uh,
Okay, and then I'll just show the pretty much recorded demo to you guys. And before I start the demo, uh, so demo was prepared uh, with a three node dev stack. Uh, two of them are controller slash network node where two L3 agents are running in a DVRS net node, a DVRS net mode and one compute node which is running on the um, DVR mode, right? So just to give on the top uh, corner, two screens are basically uh, capturing the TCP dump uh, on the active SNET namespace and the other side is on the uh, standby. And the middle top, you have a VM which will start just sending the traffic that you will see it. And the bottom two window is uh, just to execute some neutron command to see what we are doing, right? So I'll just play it. So when we do the router show, it says the distributed is true, which is DVR, and HA is true. So it's a DVR SNET HA. And if, when we do neutron L3 agent list hosting router, now we have a status, HA status, which shows which node and which L3 agent is hosting the active and the which one is hosting the standby. And as I mentioned, these are the two window where I'm just capturing the packets on the SNET namespace where we will see that traffic is going out. So now from VM console, just pinging some external IP, and we can see that on the active SNET namespace traffic, it starts moving, right? So once it's there, I just do disable the HA interface, just do it the hard way to do the failover. And now we see the, the ping stops. It takes some time, but let's go. Okay, so it's start and now we see it's just flip over to the different namespace. And now we go back to the hosting router, we see that the HS status just flip from active to standby and standby to active. Okay, that's all and I'll hand it over to Swami. So uh, I think that's all we had for SNAT uh, HA. And then the next one I just wanted to cover is basically what we have done for DVR during the Mitaka cycle. So one of the major things that we have done for DVR for Mitaka cycle is the scheduling changes because um, as I mentioned, previously we used to have uh, scheduling options for uh, different scheduling options for routers as well as different scheduling options for uh, DVR uh, for the SNAT. So instead of uh, having two different scheduling options and making it more complex, um, we have actually nailed down to a, a single scheduling option similar to the legacy routers where we schedule the routers to the DVR SNAT node as soon as the routers comes up. And for scheduling it to the, uh, basically to the compute nodes, uh, we are no more scheduling it. Basically we are creating routers based on, on demand whenever the port comes in. So that was one of the major change that we made, uh, which kind of uh, simplifies uh, the scheduling aspect uh, on the DVR. <clears throat> so uh, this is a summary of the things um, that I wanted to show. And the one thing that has been uh, deprecated or not, not probably not deprecated, but we are not using uh, post Mitaka is basically um, the CSNAT binding stable. We used to have a CSNAT binding stable, which actually uh, keeps track of uh, the SNAT bindings to the agent. And uh, right now, as I, as I said, we are going back to a, a single uh, scheduling option. So both SNAT and router is being tracked by uh, the router L3 agent binding stable, not the CSNAT binding stable. Uh, so the next one that we uh, we did make change to the control plane to increase the scalability on uh, performance is basically uh, is um, we have uh, done as a community a lot of changes um, to um, in creating the routers and um, 
informing the agents what we have to do. Because previously what we have been doing is we have been sending notifications to all the agents, uh, which was creating a lot of control plane issues and scalability issues. So now what we do is we only specifically send messages to the agents that are required to know. So we know where these uh, VMs are, or where these routers are located, or where these floating IPs are installed. So if any CRUD operations that happens that affect those uh, DVR serviceable ports, we only send notification to that specific host and we, not, we don't send um, notifications to every other host. And there was also another change that was made was um, during an agent uh, sync up with the servers, there was a lot of, if we have too many routers that you have configured, um, it takes a while for it to fetch all the details through a RPC from this uh, agent. So we kind of had a throttle mechanism to um, to actually fetch uh, a bunch of router information at a time, and then uh, it goes in a, in a sequence. So those were the changes that was made. Uh, <clears throat> thanks to Oleg uh, from uh, Marantes who did the work. Um, he did a great job on doing all these works. So that was a great improvement for scalability and uh, control plane performance that we did uh, during the Metaka cycle. And uh, last but not least, we also made the DVR uh, job uh, voting in the check, check queue, and we almost have uh, pretty much stable in the multi-node, and we'll make it voting in the next uh, uh, cycle. Uh, that's all we had for today, and uh, the, the one thing that I want to touch base again is for the Newton, we have some more work to do with the DVR, so we are planning to uh, have some support for BGP speakers because today the BGP speakers uh, have some issues in um, talking or exposing uh, routes to the next top gateway using the floating IPs. So that would be addressed during this cycle. And then uh, we will also work on um, IPv6 uh, addressability using north-south uh, from the compute node. So those are the two things we will work on during the Newton cycle. And that's all we have uh, today. Uh, thanks for the audience who came in today. And if you have any questions, we can take up uh, pretty quickly. <clears throat> hey, Prashant. Uh, time is actually uh, ended for the session. Uh, any questions can be asked out in the hall or on the side of the stage. Sorry, thank you. Uh, sorry, guys, I'll take up the questions outside, like if you want. <clears throat>